Recently, I built a coffee table and wanted to make a top for it that looks like marble. Seeing as this is something that I've never done before, I decided to experiment. I want the top to look something like this piece of marble. It has a dark gray background with prominent white veining. I'll be using MDF for my base, and I was told by some epoxy pros that I should paint the MDF to match the base color I'm after, and it will have better results. So I painted all but one to see if there's gonna be a difference. I'll use Moss Tabletop Epoxy because it's easy to use and I've had good results with it in the past. I mixed up one large batch of it that I could then separate out into smaller cups to experiment with different colors. I tried two different ways to color the epoxy here. First, I use liquid pigment dye. To get the gray color for the base that I was after, I just mixed black and white pigment until the color looked like a good gray to me. For the accent colors, I also tried some mica powder. I used a white mica and a black mica. Now comes the fun part. I poured the base gray color down on all the sample pieces and just spread it around with my hand. Now I made sure to write down notes for the things that I wanted to experiment with before I started so I didn't get confused. Starting from your right here. Number one, I poured two different shades of gray for the base and mixed them together so they were kind of swirly. And then number two, I drizzled both the white liquid dye and the mica powder in white to create the veining. And number three, I added drizzles of the dark gray mica powder along with the white liquid dye. Moving on to the second batch, this was a pretty cool technique. I sprayed a little bit of spray paint on top of the poured epoxy, then sprayed that with isopropyl alcohol before drizzling on the white veins. The next one before adding the veining, I added the black mica powder to the spray bottle with the isopropyl alcohol in it and then sprayed that all over. This was just an easy way to make sure the mica powder was evenly dispersed. Once I liked how all the veins looked, I took a heat gun to all the veins to soften the lines and look a bit more natural. Super satisfying to do. And on another one, I decided to experiment more with that paint isopropyl alcohol trick, this time with black paint on top of the already poured epoxy. I let those all set up overnight and here are the results. First up, here's the one that I didn't paint before I poured. This is probably not going to come across well on camera, but if you look closely by the white colors, you can see the MDF peeking through a little bit. So I will definitely be painting the MDF for my project. Next up, we have the one where I just haphazardly swirled the two tones of gray together. Uh, my kids actually like this one the best, but I think having the two tones of gray on there just makes it look a little bit too busy and a little bit too messy. Next up, we have the ones where I drizzled the mica powder on. This one has the white mica and this one has the black mica. And these are just a little bit too sparkly for me. Um, I'm just not a sparkly person, so I'm not going to be using the mica powder. This one for sure was the coolest technique where I sprayed the isopropyl alcohol after spraying it with spray paint. Here's the one where I used the gray paint and here's the one where I used the black paint. You see how the alcohol creates little bubbles in the spray paint layer and it's very cool, but again, just too busy for what I'm after on this project. The black one really looks like it could be close to granite, especially because I ended up spraying it with the alcohol that had the black mica mixed into it. And this just isn't the look I'm going for for this project, but it's a very cool technique to keep in my back pocket if I ever want to mimic granite or quartzite. Now, the last sample where I sprayed with the um, mica mixed in the alcohol, I ended up flipping it and pouring uh, just on the other side of it because I knew that I wasn't going to like the sparkles for this particular project. And now it's stuck on here, so you can't really see it so well, but this is basically what it looks like. I do think that it's a cool way to evenly spread the mica powder to create the even disbursement of the sparkles if that's what you're after. Again, a cool trick if you wanna make it look like granite or quartzite, which naturally has sparkles in it. The pour that I did on the other side of this was a last minute idea of something that 
I don't recall. Um, I don't know what I was doing because I didn't leave a sticky note, so I don't know what the test was for this one. So what did I learn from all these experiments? I don't like the mica powder, too sparkly. I don't like where I mix the two tones of gray haphazardly, too busy, but I still wanna have some sort of variation in the main base layer color to look like the marble that I picked out. There is some darker veining running through it, and I didn't like the stark contrast of the paint alcohol technique, but I think that I can accomplish something very similar by hand, but I'm not going to do any tests on that. I'm just gonna go for it. Enough with the experiments, time to do it on the real thing. Using a circle cutting jig, I cut out a circle of MDF to the size I needed for my project and added a very small round over to the edges of both sides. I figured easing the edges a bit would help the epoxy easily roll off the edges and wouldn't leave a sharp corner of MDF poking out after it rolls off the edge. I brought the tabletop inside to work on and sprayed a little spray paint just around the edges of the underside. This is just in case any bit of this top hangs over the table and someone manages to look under it. They won't see MDF, they'll see gray. Totally not a necessary step. Then I used packing tape around all the edges on the underside, and this is gonna be really helpful later on. It's going to save me a ton of time after the epoxy dries. Time to flip it over and work on the top. I made sure the edges were covered really well with the spray paint and got the top mostly covered with the gray as well. I filled in the gaps of gray with some black spray paint, thinking that if any color would peek through the epoxy, it will be a variation of color and not just a solid color, making it look more natural. I don't know if this is true or not, but it makes sense in my head. This is one of the most important steps in pouring epoxy. The tabletop epoxy I'm going to use is self-leveling. So that means the surface I'm pouring on needs to be super level in order for it to cure evenly on the surface. So I used shims to make sure it was level all around and got to mixing up the epoxy. This epoxy is one to one ratio, which is easy to pour and measure out. Then I started mixing in the color. I just kept adding color until the gray looked right to me and I could start the pour. But before I do, I need to mention one thing regarding safety. You can see that I moved this whole operation indoors. That's because it's freezing outside and epoxy is really finicky when it comes to temperature. If it's too cold when you pour it, it will be too thick to properly self level and it will cure too slowly. If it's too hot, the opposite happens, and it will be too runny, and it will cure too quickly, which can cause a whole host of problems like cracking. So 70 to 80 degrees is the perfect temperature for pouring epoxy. The only place for me to work that's 70 degrees right now is in my basement. There's a problem with that though, me and my family live in this house and epoxy fumes can be potentially harmful to us. So I need a way to destroy any air pollutants before my family can breathe them in. The EnviroCleanse air system is the only reason why I'm able to do this epoxy pour inside my house at the right temperature. This system has a multi-stage filtration process using a patented EnviroCleanse air cartridge and a true HEPA filter that removes 99.9% .9 of viruses, bacteria, VOCs, odors, and other toxic chemicals that could be in the air. And it does this without the use of any toxic chemicals, and it's been third-party tested to be safe and effective at fighting the toughest air pollutants. I had this running while I was doing all the test pours and the spray paint as well, and I was really shocked at how quickly and effectively it cleaned the air. With the patented technology behind the EnviroCleanse filter, the chemicals in the air go into the unit and then they're captured and completely destroyed. If you stand right in front of the unit when it's on, all you can smell is fresh air, even in a room that you just use spray paint in. It's really amazing and it's also made in the USA, so it's really high quality, powder coated metal, not plastic. I left the EnviroCleanse unit running the whole time I was doing the epoxy pour and left it running overnight as well, and I did not smell a thing in the rest of my house. Not only is it great for destroying odors and VOCs, it's also able to filter out sawdust. So I will definitely be running this unit in my shop to filter out all that fine sawdust as well. I'll drop a link down below so you guys can check it out. And if you use the code 3x3, you can get 10% off the EnviroCleanse air system. It's a really awesome unit. All right, 
Back to the epoxy pour. Pouring the base layer is pretty straightforward and simple. The only tip I have here is that you should not scrape the sides of the container you're using to try to get every last drop. If you do that, you might end up with parts of the epoxy that just didn't mix well together. So either too much of part A or too much of part B, and it won't cure correctly in some spots. So just pour out whatever <laughs> comes out easily by itself. You can use anything to spread it out. I started with a squeegee, but just ended up using my hand. Make sure you're wearing gloves when doing this though. Also, something that I should have done. I should have created a dam with tape around the edges so it didn't flow over right away. I'll explain later why when it's dry. All right, now the stressful part, all the accent colors for the veining. I mixed up another large batch of epoxy and separated them out into smaller cups to mix up different colors. I saw a tip where someone suggested using a squeeze bottle to do this effect, so I tried that out too. First, with the black. Like I mentioned earlier, the natural marble has a very subtle dark vein to it. And I thought I could try to mimic this by hand instead of just pouring out the two colors haphazardly and swirling them together like I did in my sample that I did not like. The squeeze bottle sounded like it would be perfect to be able to control how thin the lines were. But as you can see, it's not really going so well. I wanted very thin lines, so I had to make a very small hole in the cap and the epoxy was just not flowing out of the hole easily at all. It was too thick, and if I made the hole any bigger, the veins would be too thick for that very subtle look, and I didn't even bring down scissors anyway to be able to do that. Making as many black lines as I wanted to make with the squeeze bottle would have taken way too long, and you only have about 30 minutes to work with this stuff. So I just had to move on to the main event, which was the white veining. The next squeeze bottle had a bigger hole already cut in the top, and I just started going to town and laid down white lines in a random pattern. In retrospect, I don't think the squeeze bottles were a good idea. Just using a popsicle stick to drizzle it or just pouring it straight out of the plastic cups would have been sufficient. I wasted those squeeze bottles, but I tried these things out so you don't have to. Just like on my test pieces, I used the heat gun to move the epoxy around a little which reduces the harshness between the color and makes it more natural looking. It's really important here to keep the heat gun moving. If you stay in one spot for too long, you will burn the epoxy. This happened to me and I'll show you what it looks like later. At this point, I was not happy with how it was looking. The big white vein just didn't look cool enough to me, so I poured on a ton more and added more thin white veins and then softened all those lines again. This time I made sure to also soften the black lines too because I did not like how just a few of those black lines were looking. I really wish I just used a popsicle stick to make more of those thin black lines. Oh well, <laughs> to add a little bit more realism to it, I created fractures that you would normally see in marble just by cutting a popsicle stick across some of the lines in random spots. Now, probably the most fun part, popping the bubbles with a torch. After the epoxy sits for about 20 minutes or so, teeny tiny little bubbles will come to the surface, just lightly go over them with a torch, and once again be careful not to burn the epoxy, so keep the torch moving. I mentioned before that I should have created a dam with tape when pouring, and this is one of the reasons why. I had to go back and try to fill in any areas on the sides with the white to make it look like the vein was running through the material. I'll explain more when I show you the finished product. Anyway, I let it set up overnight. Once it was all dry, it was super easy to clean up all the dry drips from underneath because I used the packing tape earlier. Just hit it with a little bit of heat to make the epoxy soft and peel away. My daughter thought this part was really fun and in her words, so satisfying. All right, this was a pretty cool experiment and I feel like I got pretty close to making it look like marble, but here's what I would do differently. I mentioned a few times that I would make a dam around the edges with tape before pouring, and here's why. The epoxy flows so well right when you mix it, but a little bit too well for going over these edges, so there was not a good amount of coverage on the edges because it was too thin and runny, it just slipped right off. So what I should have done was tape it up, leave a little lip for the epoxy to sit in, 
wait for the epoxy to set up a little bit and harden just a little before letting it flow over the edge, probably around 30 minutes or so. At the 30 minute mark, the epoxy is not fully set, but it's like hard enough that it's not so runny and so liquidy and it won't just completely flow and fall off the edge. I think this would have created better coverage all around and it also would have created the flow of the colors on the veins going down the sides because the color from these veins would just naturally flow down with gravity. Another thing I would have done differently was add more darker color in the background for more of that subtle dark veining. I was all flustered that the black wasn't flowing out of the squeeze bottles easily and stupid me didn't bring down any extra plastic cups to pour it out of the squeeze bottle and I didn't bring down scissors to widen the hole in the top of the squeeze bottle. I was just not prepared. So I guess that's another tip, prepare for the worst. Someone suggested on the full build video for this table that a feather is a great tool to make epoxy look natural. Dip the feather in the epoxy and just fan it out. I think that's an excellent idea and I think probably would have made those black lines in the background look more natural. I mentioned earlier in the video that I burned the epoxy with the heat gun. Here's what that looks like. I had kept the heat gun on one place for too long by accident and it started smoking. You could see how the sheen changes here a bit. I tried to fix it by pouring more epoxy on it, but it didn't really work well and it's still noticeable. Now, speaking of the sheen, I know epoxy is known for its high gloss appearance, but I'm just not sure it goes well with the base of the table. The rest of it is very flat and the shiny top feels out of place to me. If I were to use real marble on this project, I probably would go with honed marble. So I'm actually going to sand this back and knock down the sheen to make it look honed. To do that, I'm going to start with 220, then work my way up through the grits until probably around 1,000, maybe 20, uh, 2,000 grit, depending on what it looks like after 1,000 grit. I think this is also going to save the edges, which look pretty bad right now. Sanding them would definitely make it look cleaner. I think it's also going to be better in this room that it's installed in because there are a lot of windows in here and the top is just too reflective for me right now. All right, so this was a really fun experiment. For my first time doing it, not too shabby. If you have any faux marble tips and tricks, make sure to leave them down below. Also, if you wanna see the full finished table, that video was already posted last week and I'll drop a link to that down below as well. Huge thanks to EnviroCleanse for sponsoring this video and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.